Sometimes our guests are from Westminster think tanks, like Mark here today, and these think tanks aren't uncontroversial. So we thought it was about time we looked a little more closely at what think tanks do and who they're working for. Here's Elizabeth Glinker. Get behind the country and help make this great thing back. Think tanks. The NHS seems to be in a perpetual state. Some of the most influential groups you've never heard of. The concerns that the market may have. They meet MPs, appear on TV, write reports and influence policy. But who are they and who's paying? You can keep asking me and I'm just not going to tell you. It's a private matter. If there really is nothing to worry about, then... Uh, why can't people share this information? Well, if it's, it makes them suspicious, then, you know, that's not something I can control. We're going behind the scenes with two of the most influential think tanks who've been accused of secrecy and underhand tactics to ask, do they have something to hide? A think tank is a group of experts who provide research and advice on a range of political, social and economic problems. On any journey through Westminster, you'll pass the doors of dozens of them, hidden in plain sight. They can be left-wing, right-wing or neutral. But what's worrying some people is where the money's coming from and what it's buying. The principal concern here is that uh, decisions that are meant to be made in the public interest are captured by narrow private interests. Duncan Hames works for a think tank dedicated to scrutinising the behaviour of other think tanks. He says businesses may be trying to influence politicians without us knowing. If a sugar manufacturer were to publish a report advocating that there shouldn't be a sugar tax, then people will know that that report come from a sugar manufacturer and they can form their own view as to whether to pay much attention to it. But what if that opinion comes from a think tank? Here's Dia Chakravarti, then of the Taxpayers' Alliance, criticising the sugar tax back in 2017. A great win for the nanny state champions. For the rest of us, not so much. If instead a think tank publishes a report but doesn't declare who funds them, how are we as members of the public meant to have confidence in the objectivity and the independence of that work? <laughs> This matters because these groups are influential, with politicians regularly appearing at their events. And while ministers have to declare a meeting with a business, a dinner with a think tank is off the books. It's difficult to measure just how influential they are, but think tanks will often boast about their connections. Here's the head of the think tank, the Institute of Economic Affairs, doing just that, whilst being secretly filmed by Greenpeace campaigners last year. Because he's such an expert, he's able to get into ministers and cabinet ministers. And so he'll be able to make those introductions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he knows them all really well. So what about the funding? Think tanks are judged by three criteria. Do they disclose their total income? Do they name their funders? Do they declare the size of donations? So, for example, the Institute for Government does all of these. Policy Network does the first two, but doesn't declare the size of donations. The Institute of Economic Affairs discloses only its total income. The Adam Smith Institute and the Taxpayers Alliance provide no information whatsoever. This is Tufton Street, home to no less than eight right-of-centre think tanks, including perhaps the most well-known, the Taxpayers Alliance. Launched in 2003, the Taxpayers Alliance is a private company and doesn't have to declare its donors. We respect the privacy of every single person that donates to the TPA and many of our donations are way below um, £5,000 Some of them might be, year. but some of them are a lot more than that, aren't they? So well, why not be more open about who's funding you? If somebody who donated £5,000 or more to the TPA chose to come onto your programme and say, I support the Taxpayers Alliance with my own money, I wouldn't stop them. In fact, I'd support them. But I'm not going to elicit that information. But you know that makes people suspicious, don't you? Well, if it's, it makes them suspicious, then, you know, that's not something I can control. I think what happens is you often uh, see a confusion between, uh, you know, people who disagree with what we say and don't try and tackle that. And instead, they try and discredit us by talking about other issues. And one of those accusations is that the Taxpayers Alliance has been coordinating with other right wing groups to achieve their goals. While some had previously denied it, last year a whistleblower case revealed the TPA was one of nine think tanks who were holding regular strategy meetings, something I put to John O'Connell. So the Taxpayers Alliance hosts a monthly meeting of, I suppose, what we call broadly the, the centre-right um, you know, you know, coterie of think tanks and campaign groups. Um, it's very, very hard to come up with a coordinated strategy with such a diverse bunch. You know, I've not actually been at that meeting for 
over a year now. Really? So, um, Why is that? It, uh, you know, because I, I've had other things on or whatever else it is, um, meetings. Well, just around the corner from Tufton Street is another think tank, the Institute for Economic Affairs, or the IEA. Uh, I'm heading in there now to speak to the boss. So down here into the... That boss is Mark Littlewood, who we saw earlier in the secret filming. He was happy to show me around, but not to talk about his funders. You can keep asking me, and I'm just not going to tell you. It's a private matter. And just the fact that there are loads of people screaming on Twitter asking me a question is not a reason why you should answer it. Supposing I were to say, these are the 12 FTSE 100 companies that give us money. You actually think these conspiracy theories should go away? Maybe they wouldn't they, go they away, are, but you'd be being honest, they, wouldn't they, you? They, well, but, but as I say, it's not a question of honesty, it's a question of privacy. They're not interested in Mr and Mrs Smith from Stoke-on-Trent who might make a donation, but they might be interested if it's Coca-Cola, if it's big American uh, trusts which have a particular political agenda. Uh, they might be interested if it is uh, large oil no, companies, the people, large pharma companies. People who keep asking these companies. questions just don't like our ideas. In fact, we know the IEA and a number of other UK think tanks have received funding from right-wing American donors because in the US, these groups have to file tax returns. Do you take money from America? Oh, definitely. I mean, we'll, we'll take money from anywhere in the world as long as it's clean and legal. But some advocates of free speech say the focus on who's paying is missing the point. The kind of desperation just now with which we inquire into who funds things is actually quite corrosive in the public sphere. It's, it, everybody is now searching around for the hidden strings and the shadowy figures that behind them. Are there shadowy figures? Should we be worried? Well, maybe there are shadowy figures, but I think, as I say, I, I think that's a matter less to worry about. It's only by weighing up different ideas that we actually gain the capacity to work out what it is that we believe ourselves. What might surprise you is that the Institute of Economic Affairs, like a number of other think tanks, is an educational charity. That comes with tax breaks, but also restrictions on political activity, policed by the Charity Commission. You have to show that what you're doing is al al informing people and allowing them to draw their own conclusions. You mustn't be pushing a particular agenda, and of course you can't be party political in any way. If a charity oversteps that line, uh, we can take action. And just a few days after our interview, the IEA was issued with an official warning for this event, advocating a no-deal Brexit without other opinions represented, which the Charity Commission said risked the perception it was politically biased. How we regulate think tanks matters because they're here in Westminster every day, lobbying on things that affect our everyday lives. They get to appear on TV, they get quoted in newspapers, and they get to meet politicians behind the scenes. And while some think tanks refuse to say who's funding them, there will be people who are suspicious of their motives. Now, the think tanks we've spoken to say that's missing the point. We should be engaging with their ideas, arguing with them, irrespective of who's paying. But in this digital age of fear and loathing, the calls for transparency are likely to get louder. Mark, do you understand why viewers question us and question you in general um, as to why we have you on and why we give you a platform for your ideas when we don't know who funds you? Well, if that applies to the IA, it's got to apply across the board. When Justin Welby appears on the Andrew Marr show at Sofa to opine sure. about welfare reform, I don't see people saying, who funds the church? We're yeah, talking about why, think tanks. You can't, you can't I think, cauterise think tanks. Right, well, let's just and say talk the about... IEA and the Taxpayers Alliance need to reveal this, but not the Church of England, Shelter, Oxfam, Greenpeace or anybody else. Well, shall we get you to engage? answer for the IEA on these questions? Because yeah, these sure. are the questions that viewers have put. And I'm saying to you, do you understand why they want to know Overwhelmingly, who funds you when you are given platforms on programmes like this? Overwhelmingly, I think the people who ask the questions, overwhelmingly, not exclusively, don't really care about transparency. Because How they do you don't, know that? because they don't pop up saying who funds you when it's say a left wing group on television. They are not consistent about their oh, questioning. Because you can find so, that on so, our website well, you can't, straight you away. Can't, left wing. Well, you can't. Sorry, Greenpeace don't really release all their data. Right, well, hang on, second, hang on a second. But hang on a second. Well, why should a think tank be treated but differently to any playing, other part of civil society? You're playing the victim here, Mark, um, and you're deflecting to other organisations, and you say you're not being treated, the same rule. not being treated fairly. And I'm asking you some basic questions yep. about why people want to know. 
and do you understand that? Because if you are being given a platform and you have got very particular ideas, mm -hmm. people want to know that these ideas are not ones that have been funded by vested interests before you've actually come to them yourself. So that, would be, that would be, I think, reasonable if you could look through the IEA's back catalogue and say, this is a bit curious. One day they appear to be in favour of high taxes and the next day in low taxes. It may be more nuanced but, than that. So, so it is, if you could show, I defy anyone to look through the IEA's 63 years of research, more than 50 million words of research, and not detect a completely consistent classical liberal free market approach to everything. All right, well, now, let's, have a, look, let's like... have a look at some of the examples because the, the issues that you campaign on, and you're talking about consistency here, the question of the sugar tax yeah. and fizzy drinks. How can people, our viewers, have confidence in your arguments about freedom and individual choice if there is also a suspicion, maybe well-founded or not, that you have and are funded by companies with an interest in selling sugary drinks or products? Because, uh, uh, because you, you might take the view that I and everybody else at the IA are secretly in our heart of heart socialists who want taxes and regulation to go up across the board and we are not sincere in what we say and actually we're all really hardened communists and we're only putting this forward because we're corporate shills for corporate interests. You might take that view and think I'm insincere. Right, and but these are very specific. These if, are not broadly well, about I'm a whether you're a communist. I don't Fine. want there to Fine. be a sugar tax. But if you are being influenced, if you were transparent about who was funding you, people could then make their own judgments. And you could still make that argument. But, for instance, if we take something that is a little bit more nuanced, you call for a flat rate of nine pence per unit of alcohol, as opposed to a whole range of possible mm -hmm. duties. I'm not talking about taking the completely opposite view, um, and that was including up to 34 mm -hmm. pence. Wouldn't it be relevant in people's minds if there were people in the alcohol industry who were donating money? I, why don't you engage with the topic? Is a 9p flat rate on alcohol a better way to internalise the externality, to use the economic argument, sure. on alcohol? Then there was no but consideration... you just made the point, because in order to engage with you on the topic, people want to know why? that you are independent in proposal? your ideas rather than being but, funded by the very people whose say, ideas you're espousing. If, if there is any doubt about the independence of our ideas, I defy you to find one piece of work by the IEA which is not absolutely right. unambiguously in the classical liberal tradition. All right, if you could find us sometimes argue, arguing for industrial subsidies <laughs> here and tax breaks there, been fair enough. to forward that view. Mm. Well, we're libertarian. We're free market libertarians. No, but what Pfizer is saying is that if you have always had money from certain vested interests, as people will see it, then those are the views that you've espoused. They don't know that these are ideas that you have come up with and then people have given you money. Well, have you ever accepted well, money from tobacco companies? Well, we, I, I mean, I've said we're not going to go through the list of a phone directory and say, do you take from that one or this one or the other one? We will not allow any company to commission research from the IEA. We will well, not allow them to look at the research and the independent researcher who will approach it from a free market school of thought from a particular angle okay. reaches their own conclusions. Right, well, that is interesting. I'm going to just come on to a speci specific example about that. But have you accepted money from tobacco companies? I'm not going to, well, why are you picking on tobacco companies? I don't know, it's just an example. We've talked well, about uh, well alcohol just... companies. Who don't... Have you? <coughs> Tobacco, if tobacco them. companies are funding the IEA, I should think they'd be pretty angry at the campaign that the IEA have been running against in favour of vaping, which has been devastating for um, the tobacco industry. If you look at the, you know, the IEA on housing, it wants a deregulation of the sector, which would affect badly all the construction and well, and I'm know, going to sectors. And I am on going to banking, open this up. You know. I'm just going to finish, because on that point about whether people are actually asking you to do research on their behalf, last year The Guardian reported that you received a donation of thousands of pounds from the casino industry after you called for restrictions on the number of casinos to be lifted. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I think the, I think the casino industry is, that was in the, is correct. That was in the Guardian. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the, the National Casino Industry Forum confirmed it donated eight thousand pounds to your organisation, having fact-checked a draft of the report. So they were actually fact-checking your oh, work. I want to be absolutely clear about this. If we are, by the way, you're right to say the donation followed the research, didn't pay for the research. Well, if they if we then say writing, having fact-checked a draft yes, of the so, report. Did that ever happen, that they are actually believe, telling you what to write? No, no, that is rather different. If you are well, writing about a particular sector, housing, casinos, sugar, 
it would be pretty ridiculous if you didn't go to people in that industry and say, from what we can tell, these are the number of, I don't know, people under the age of 18 who have been caught gambling in casinos. Does that, you know, are, are, are these facts correct? That is not an editorial decision. The idea that think tanks should sit in ivory towers and not talk to anyone in the sector you're uh -huh. researching. Right, but I have just pointed to a specific example where the implication is that is what's happened, that actually they were telling you what to do because they were going to well, give you a Well, that's emphatically not true. That's, that's emphatically not true. But if you are writing about casinos, any author at the IEA is writing about casinos, we are utterly strict. They need to reach their own conclusions. But I think it would be a bit crazy if they didn't talk to anyone involved in the casino industry at all while they're putting that piece of work together. Pfizer, listening to this, this is about ideas, ideas that do get a platform on programmes like this. Do you in any way accept the argument of privacy, first of all? No, I think we should be absolutely transparent. And, you know, I'm really proud to run a think tank that every year gets a five-star rating. You can go to our website right now, look up who funds us, and I will say it here, we're mainly funded by trade unions. Um, obviously, I come with a particular perspective we all do and to be honest about that is just the right thing to do right. and, but and we have to think about, about the best interest but, but people are questioning what is coming first Mark's ideas from the IEA exactly or the but we funded... don't know do we that's the point the point is with this is that we don't, don't know how best the interest is market liberal think tank uh, but they've always got their money from certain places and why can't why what are you hiding this is a question it's we always person. need to ask everyone David Where Dimbleby, is the I think money that, well, well, let me from? just say no David Dimbleby I think it was you said about one of our staff members that the Kate Andrews that the abuse she received on Twitter was vile, loathsome, and utterly you're disgusting. Again, you're avoiding the issue. And I don't know. If somebody wants to give us five thousand pounds, why would not be transparent? Because I, well, I don't want them to receive vile, loathsome, no, and disgusting. No, none stuff. of our funders get vile well, abuse. Our staff do. Oh, well, that, hang on, but that's interesting. If, if Pfizer is saying that actually the companies that fund all the trade unions don't get that sort of abuse, is it? the time now to put this to rest, be more transparent, be more upfront and see what happens. No, I, I don't believe that you, in a free society, I don't believe that we should, for example, put party political membership free, lists. In, the Labour Party membership list is not in the public domain and nor should it be so. This is so right, it, it is it perfectly be. legitimate for people to privately donate to private Let, causes. Let's talk about think tanks. What are your views? in listening to this debate? I think transparency is absolutely crucial here because if you had uh, a sugar company, for example, coming out saying particular things, you would know that that was their point of view. You would know that's why they were saying it. But that is Mark's point of view anyway, he says. Yeah, but if it's coming via um, a think tank, you don't know anymore who benefits from that, who's paying the money, who's putting the money in there. And transparency is important here. And I think this is really a reputational issue now for think tanks because think tanks can't prove where their money is coming from. Um, certainly not the the, the think tanks that were highlighted in your film and if they can't prove where it's coming from those questions will always be asked. 